Hola, my beautiful people. How are we all doing today? For those of you who are new to my channel, I want to say welcome. This is Skelly by Nature. I am Skelly. And we've got a baby Hades and a Mookie saying hello. And I want to say welcome to my channel. And for those of you returning for another one of my videos, again, much, much appreciated. Uh, I love the fact that you guys keep tuning in. Things are getting better. I'm getting a lot more, more people contacting me about doing other videos and, and other information and just, you know, sharing your experiences that you have learned from my channel. So, um, again, this is what keeps me going and this is why I'm doing this video here. So this video here is for, for a lot of the, the dog people. Um, and one of the things that I have is a video about, you know, natural, natural dog food and in the videos on, on treats. And one of the things that I've come across throughout the years is I've had a lot of people, and this is totally understandable, you know, you have busy lives, you don't have time to make dog food, but you want to do it, and it's hard to do. And so I'm going to be doing this video, which I'm going to be kind of, this is geared towards people who don't have the time to make a full-on meal, but if you're doing yourself a favor and doing your research and, you're, and you are buying a, a, you know, a decent dog food, uh, but, you know, those still are missing a lot of things to give us, our dogs, that full nutrition or the ability to say get away from vaccines and stuff so where I treat a lot of vaccine you know instead of doing vaccines you know I use a lot of herbs and spices in in replacement of that um, you know say for instance like fleas and ticks I don't use a flea and tick med um, I use herbs herbs and spices for that so this is a video on a, a simple gravy uh, a supplement gravy that we're going to use to add to our dog food and you can again as well customize this the way you want it. I am going to explain why I use each herb and what I'm doing and, and how it's going to help our dogs. So the first step of this whole thing is the first thing that you need to do is you need to start saving the bones that you would typically throw away. Uh, I'm one that I eat a lot of chicken, so I'm putting chicken bones away. And again, you know, whether you got a ham bone or something like that. So, you know, as you can see, I just throw them in a bag. I throw them in the freezer. Um, so now I've got myself a nice freezer, you know, half a freezer bag full of bones. And what we're going to do is we're going to get these bones and we're going to make a broth and then take it and we're going to grind this down. We're going to add some herbs and spices, a couple of the little things that you can quickly add, grind it up and make a gravy that we can add to our dog food to help complete that nutrition that dog foods lack. So stay tuned. Let me get set up for for the kit, you know, so that you can see what I'm doing on top of the stove and we will go on to the next step. Okay, so like I said, the first step you need to do is obviously get yourself a bunch of bones. I save all the chicken bones, I do pork bones, anything that's, you know, that I'm going to throw away. Um, and so instead of throwing stuff away, I'm going to make a chicken broth or a broth for my dogs, a bone broth. Now the reason I'm doing this is because one of the things that uh, our dogs need is the is glucosamine, which can be found in the bone marrow, um, and as well as a lot of the nutrients that come in the ligaments. Because they, if you are say like me, I'm wanting to do a, a full chicken sometimes, so I take those bones. And I do leave a little bit of the chicken and ligaments on there. And so, again, those are going to add some good nutrition for our dog food. So, as you can see, I get a decent amount. I'm just going to take these. And the first step is pretty simple. Take those bones. 
separate what you can and get them into a pot. Now, the th next thing that we're going to do is you're going to want to fill this up, um, not completely filled with water, but at least try to put enough water in your pot that you're going to be covering all the bones. I, I like to go a little bit higher than what the bones are. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to get that water to a boil. Then when it starts boiling, we're going to turn it down to a simmer. And then once it goes down to a simmer, I'm going to throw my cover on and I'm going to let that sit. Now you can do this anywhere from four hours to as, as long as you want. The, and again, you know, the idea is what we're doing is we're softening those bones so that way we can take and we're going to take this and we're going to add it to our blender and we're going to grind up all those bones and that way there's no big pieces. It'll all be soft and there will also be ground up to a point where it's going to be in a gravy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to add water to my pot. I'm going to get this going and I will see you guys in a few hours. Okay. So now I'm back. It's been roughly six hours that I had my stock brewing. And so I'm now ready for the next step. So um, just, just so you know, you don't necessarily need to use all of these. So keep in mind, I have three dogs that I'm making this for. One's a puppy, one's a seven-year-old, and one's an 18 year old. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of, a, a lot of different pieces. Uh, one because of the puppy, uh, looking for, you know, things like, um, bone strength and, and, and helping with his joints built, you know, building his joints and muscle structure, as well as the, my, my 18 year old who, has neurological issues and had, suffers from, you know, used to suffer from seizures and, you know, he's got, you know, little tumors and things like that. So keep in mind, I'm making this for, for three dogs. And so this is why I'm going to take the time and try to explain to you guys what each piece is good for. Then you can decide on what herbs are good for your dog or your dogs that you have. And if you have any questions, feel free, contact me, and I can help you. As well as if there's anything else, that, if you have any other issues that, that I may not be covering, feel free, again, contact me, uh, and I'll give you, you know, hopefully some help in what direction you can go in. So the first thing that we're going to do is I like to take my ladle and I like to take the bones right out of the, the broth and I like to put them in se separately into my blender. Now once I have the majority of the bones in there, I'm just going to pour the broth right in. So now our next step is going to be we're going to blend this up. I like to go on a, on a nice low, but when you blend this up, just make sure you blend this up pretty good and make sure that the, you know, the bone gets broken down and in, in, into really small, fine pieces. Okay. So that took about a minute before, you know, when you grind this up, you're, you're going to hear, you're going to feel it. It's going to be a rough grind and then you'll hear that there's no more pieces floating around. So that's, like I said, for my blender. And the amount that I used, it took about a minute. Um, so now we're ready to start adding our supplements and our herbs. And so the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with some cinnamon. The reason I use cinnamon is this is for older dogs. Uh, like I told you, I have an 18-year-old. Um, so this cinnamon helps with brain function, it helps with fighting against dementia and aging, it's, it also acts as an anti-inflammatory, it helps with yeast infections, because if you know, once you get your dog gets older, a lot of times in their ears, they produce some, you know, extra yeast, uh, as well as it helps with joint and muscle pain, um, it helps in heart health, 
uh, regulates blood pressure and also helps with diabetes as well as fighting cancer. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, so I'm going to go and toss in some cinnamon. Now, I just kind of throw the amount in. I am going to let you know when you, when you do this, start with a little bit with your dogs and then work your way up. Because some of these, uh, you know, like say, for, like for instance, like the garlic and, you, you know, some of the other things like the whorehound uh, it, and the, and the um, turmeric is something that dogs are sometimes not used to. So start low and then you can add more or, you know, pay attention to what your dog needs. Um, and then... You can go from there. And so the next thing that I'm going to chew, that I'm going to put in is, I have this jar here. It's Italian. It says Italian seasoning. Now this is a mix that I do. This has things that I've grown from my garden that I just keep collecting. And so mine has curly parsley. It has sage. It has rosemary, oregano, basil, and thyme. If you want, um, and you and you don't have your own garden, these, are, like I said, that's what I'm using. That's what's in this mixture. But if you don't want to do that, you can go buy Italian seasoning at the grocery store. When you're doing that, make sure to flip it over and read your label on the back. Uh, someone gratefully gave me the knowledge that they... They actually turned theirs over, and theirs had onion powder in it. Uh, so some seasonings do have onion powder, which is not good for your dog. So make sure you turn around, read that label. Make sure there's no onion powder. Or if you want the perfect pinch Italian seasoning from McCormick's does not have onion powder. So um, like I said, I'm gonna. So mine has curly parsley, which is great for vitamin A, vitamin C, and K. It boosts the immune system. It Im it improves vision. It helps with blood clotting, liver and kidney health, and it's a good source of fiber, which helps it be a, a good diuretic. Sage is an anti-inflammatory. It helps with allergies. It also helps with bad breath. It's an antibacterial. It's got a great source of calcium, magnesium, uh, and potassium, and phosphorus, and zinc. So that's your sage, as well as sage can also be used as a, um, uh, fights against uh, fleas and ticks and parasitic things. Uh, rosemary is great for the heart. It's great for GI issues, it neutralizes free radicals, and as well as rosemary actually works as a natural preservative, so that's what I like the rosemary for. Oregano, it boosts the immune system, it prevents viruses and infections, it's a great digestive, great for digestive issues, diarrhea, gas. And it's a great source of vitamin A, C, K, and as well as omega-3, which is very important for young dogs. Uh, the basil, a lot of people don't know. Basil also helps in fighting against cancer. It prevents cell damage. It's a, it's a, it helps calm anxiety with your animals. So if you have a dog that is a little hyper or has suffers from anxiety, Sometimes putting just a basil plant around them, the smell of the basil helps calm them down, but also feeding them basil does as well. As well as I like basil for my older dog because basil does help with arthritis pain. And thyme, the last one. It helps with the digestive tract. It fights against parasites and UTIs. It helps with arthritic issues and it's great antibacterial. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, so those are the, that's what's in, like I said, in mine.
Uh, this I'm going to go a little heavy. I'm probably doing about uh, about three tablespoon, four tablespoons in there. So the next thing that I'm going to be adding is ginger. Ginger is great for my older dog again. Um, it helps with blood circulation, easing blow, and heart health, prevents cell damage, as well as uh, fights nausea, motion sickness, joint pain, fights against heartworm, and it also as well lowers the um, your, your blood sugar levels. So that's what I'm using this for. So the ginger, I'm doing about two tablespoons. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna be doing is garlic powder. Sometimes I, I normally actually take and use garlic. Uh, I usually use fresh garlic, but today I'm just going with some garlic powder. Now, when you're using garlic, you need to be careful. Do, do a little research. Um, I think it's about one teaspoon for every 10 pounds is what you can give your dog. Uh, if you are if you need to go a little lower on the garlic than you really want um, because you're better off. If you go overboard with the garlic, then you can end up with a sick dog. So um, too much garlic is not good for your dogs. A little bit of garlic is great for your dogs. So... Just balance, make sure you balance and, and look it up. I think it's one teaspoon per 10 pounds. So um, again, keep that in mind. But garlic is great for fighting against cancer. I also use garlic mainly to fight against fleas and ticks. And it helps bacteria and, and fight against toxins. It also helps with infl uh, joints, like inflammation in the joints. So that's another reason why I like to use garlic. Okay, so the next thing is going to be uh, turmeric. And so what I like to use turmeric for is, it, obviously it helps reduce inflammation. It helps with digestion. Uh, it, it prevents cancer. It helps with cognitive functioning. Like I said, I have a dog that has a couple cognitive issues. And then it also promotes good skin and coat for your dog. So we're going to throw in a couple teaspoons of this. Don't, and so this is again another herb that when you start using this, because, uh, it, you know, if you've ever had it, it, it does have a very strong pungent kind of flavor. So when you do start doing this, add a little bit. See how your dog reacts to it sometimes. And keep in mind, dogs have, they can smell 10 times better than us. So even though we think we're putting a very little bit in, your dog can smell it. Uh, so start very low, then work your way up as, as you feel comfortable. I'm doing about a couple tablespoons of each. And the, another reason why I like using a variety of things is because there's, you know, some things that work that that can be used to help something and then there's something else that helps the same issue uh so instead of overloading on one i can mix it and they work together so that's why i like doing that okay so the next thing i'm going to do is i have eggshells yes this is eggshells uh i just when i make eggs i put the eggshells off to the side what i like to do with my eggshells after i collect them is I'll take and I'll, I'll throw them, a bunch of them into a pot. I boil them and kind of just to, you know, in case there's any salmonella or anything else like that. If you, and that's if you buy, it, I, I buy in organic eggs. So try to keep in mind too, when, when you're adding stuff like, you know, eggs or eggshells, if you can go the organic route, that's much better because then you know that there's not, any type of pesticides or any kind of dangerous chemicals in there, you know, from either the growth of the, you know, the egg or being sprayed as a preservative or anything like that. So what I, like I said, what I do is I, I boil it for 10 minutes, let them dry, 
Then I break them down. I use my pistol and mortar and I break them down into a nice fine powder. So I'm going to be adding eggshells. Now eggshells are obviously a great source of calcium um, that helps strengthen the bones. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to be adding is, is chia seeds. Uh, chia seeds, like any other seed, you know, they're a great source of fiber. It helps with the, the digestive system. It helps with constipation, regulates the blood sugar. It boosts the energy as well as because it's a good fiber. It, if you've got a dog that's overweight, like my old boy, um, it helps curb the appetite. So it helps with weight loss as well as it's a great, these are great source for omega-3, which is good for my puppy. So I'm going to be adding some chia seeds. I'm going to, you know, I go in probably about a quarter cup. Okay, so my next piece is something that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, this is called whorehound. Uh, whorehound is a, an herb uh, that a lot of people don't know about. If you've never heard of whorehound, do your research. It's actually a really great, um, a great herb to use as it, it, if you're a person who's ever had a Ricola cough drop, uh, what makes them taste differently is, is the whorehound that they use. They're one of the few, very few cough drops that actually uses whorehound. But what whorehound is good for, again, I use whorehound for my old dog. He has a little bit of a bronchitis, bronchitis issue or breathing issue. So whorehound breaks up mucus. Um, it flushes out toxins and it aids in healing. So that's what I like to do. So I'm using the whorehound for that. So the next piece that I've got here is something that uh, this is I'm actually using a red belted polypore mushroom you, you you don't see mushrooms added to dog food which is kind of a shame and you get a lot of people that have you know the negative thought about mushrooms being bad for dogs they're not they're actually wonderful for dogs and the 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 health benefits that come from mushrooms there's so many great benefits and there's so many different types of mushrooms that can be used to help deal with different ailments that our dogs and us suffer from. So like I said, this is a red belted polypore, red belted polypore or any polypore mushroom of that sort. One of the best things about them is they do have the ability to fight against cancers. There's been studies that show they actually do suffocate and kill cancer cells um they also work as um it helps with allergies and the, and they help against you know stopping and shrinking tumors they're good for it's good for great gut health but the other nice thing that you get from polypore mushrooms or mushrooms that you're not going to find in any dog food is the they uh, they work great as a, a prebiotic, which you know that's where it's given that good gut health. So again, we're gonna throw that in there, and then lastly, uh, so now this is this is kind of a, a a point where you know if there's things going, if you've got stuff sitting around your house that you know you're looking at, like for instance here, um, I've got this bag of green beans. I mean, if I wanted to eat these green beans, they're fine, probably. I just have like five bags of these because this year in my garden, my green beans have been growing like crazy. So I pulled out some green beans. Um, you know, so I'm going to throw in some green beans. And, you know, green beans are great for, um, you know, boosting the immune system. It helps improve the eyes. It promotes healing. As well as green beans are great for like if you're a person on a diet or your dog needs to be on a diet. Uh, they, they also serve as a great um, aid in weight loss because it helps curb the appetite. So I'm going to go in and add in a handful of green beans. 
Okay, so once you have whatever it is you want into your mixture, now we're just going to go ahead and blend this back up again. Okay, so now I have my gravy pretty much mixed up. And as you can see, you know, I got a nice, nice little kind of, this is a gravy that when, say, if you feed your dog kibble, and you want to add that extra stuff in, you can make something similar to this. I take this actually, what I'm gonna do is now make a basic meal for my dogs. I'm just gonna take some ground beef, some some sweet potatoes, and a couple couple other things, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables, and, and blend it up, and then I'm gonna use this as an, just add it to it. It just gives the dogs a little something excited that they, you know, gets them going. Um, so at this point too, take a look at what your gravy looks like. It, I'm going to put this into a, a container. It will thicken up a, a little bit, uh, as it goes in the, in the, in the fridge. Um, but this is where you may want to make adjustments. If you're, if it's too thick, you can add a little bit of water to it and loosen it up. If, if you want to thicken it up a little bit more, um, you know, feel free, kind of, like I said, if you get some berries lying around that you want to use, you can throw some berries in there. Uh, berries are great for antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. Uh, if you want, if you get some extra leftover meat or something like that, uh, feel free, put it in there, mix it up. As long as, you know, again, you, you, this is a, a, a supplement that you're adding to help better nutri give your dog better health and and put in things that are lacking in dog food because dog food really does not contain everything that is needed for your dog to be healthy it'll keep them alive but it won't make them healthy so that's what we're looking to do um, so again I hope you all enjoyed this video I hope you guys learned a little something today. I hope you guys give this a try. If you do, go ahead, drop me a message, drop me a comment down below. If you have any need uh, uh, questions or need any help with an, an issue your dog might be having, feel free to contact me and I'll help you the best I can. So until then, be beautiful, be awesome.